Back here live inside the cube, SiliconAngle.com's flagship telecast. We go out to the events to extract the signal from the noise. This is our exclusive coverage of OpenStack Summit in Portland, Oregon. I'm John Furrier with Jeff Frick, my co-host today, and our guest is Jeff O'Neill from NetApp. You guys have some news here, uh, breaking news here on the cube. It's fantastic. So uh, let's jump in. You guys and brought some code to the table. This is OpenStack Summit, where all the top developers and big companies and emerging startups are coming together build the foundation and tool, the tool chest for the cloud builders. So right. um, let's talk about your news real quick. So you guys announced some things, share us with the news. Okay, so, so we announced um, both a blueprint and, and prototype code to bring file shares, uh, a file share service capability and to, to OpenStack. That's, we've, we've put that out and, and we want to start, really start the conversation about file shares. Um, one of the things that we find very interesting about this is that if if you look at OpenStack and its its future role as the infrastructure as a service platform going forward, that it's going to have to communicate with all different types of of storage systems, and file shares is a an open gap. We we there's a fun fact right, 18 exabytes out of the 27 exabytes of total disk capacity that are shipped are shipped into file shares right now, file share service. So, so our customers are asking for it, there's a need for it, that's what, where we're going. Last night we were at, we had a little developer meet up with some developers and, and some analysts, and the, the analysts kind of come, come in two flavor in this market. You have old school cloud analysts who've been covering public cloud, right. infrastructure as a service, and then some platforms as a service. Then you have now other analysts looking at the implications for the large enterprise and large service providers, and their uh, service level agreements and some of the uh, compatibilities with existing stuff and storage is obviously a big part of it and still growing, whether it's storing for big emails and or having stuff to store it. And then you know you get flash memory, all these new innovations going on in storage. Right. But why um, is NetApp such an important ingredient right now? Because I will say that your filers and your solutions are a nice now ingredient for these cloud builders. It's a really big tool in the tool chest. Um, why is it important in the context of OpenStack? Explain why the enterprises and large infrastructures need this OpenStack and how it relates to your announcement. So, so our customers are coming to us and asking for a few things. They're, they're asking for some, some form of intelligent data protection. They've got varying SLAs, so that's one of the big things that they're after, right? Um, so providing that is, uh, is probably first and foremost in, in the requests. They're also looking for um, non-disruptive operations and how do we deliver against that. And finally, they're, they're looking for predictable scale and they want to scale, and then there's some, some other fun stuff that they're starting to look at, so at varying performance levels, so depending on the workload uh, use case that they're after. So I'm going to read a quote here on the press release. NetApp is eager to work with the OpenStack community to establish the optimal path for bringing critical shared file service capabilities to the core of OpenStack. Can you explain to the folks out there why OpenStack Summit is very relevant today? Obviously, you guys also have relationships with Amazon. You guys will play, I mean, you're like the neutral third party when it comes to all these cloud wars going on. So you're playing on in different camps and you have supported open, open source in the past. Explain why uh, the core of OpenStack needs this kind of approach. Okay, well, well, first and foremost, I mean, you, you, you saw the crowd out front, right? So it's, <laughs> it's really exciting. Uh, just, OpenStack is going to be one of the, the players going forward in infrastructure as a service. Storage is underlying that. NetApp has always been an open, open source based company. We, we work very well. Yes, another fun fact that people don't realize is we've been committing since 2001 into the Linux kernel. And we are the maintainers of, of NFS in the Linux kernel. So those are some of the things that, um, you know, where, where we're very much involved and we just see OpenStack as, as a natural migration. We're an innovation company. Uh, OpenStack 
is an innovation at the management plane for infrastructure as a service. Not everyone gets to do the, do the clean sheet of paper. I'm actually Facebook, I was talking earlier on the intro, mm -hmm. is a great example of a company that can start with a clean sheet of paper and they only have one app, it's called Facebook. So like, right. okay, they can build their own stuff, do the memcache, all that innovation. Um, they're still buying industry standard gear, but uh, um, not everyone has that clean sheet of paper. Right. There's a lot of legacy, disaster recovery, policies, you have all kinds of these in, in inherent issues and, and decades of practices, management software, management planes. So can you talk about the challenges that that brings to a large enterprise when they want to accelerate their build out of cloud infrastructure and how does and what should they be thinking about when they look at that? Well, it always goes, if, the first thing I always think of is it goes back to people. Right, the, the, you, you may want to do something brand new, you may want to do something greenfield, but, but you're working with, um, with people that have skill sets and as you said, have procedures in place and have exabytes of storage in place. And they're looking for ways to, to move to the, the brave new world and we all see the efficiencies and the, the gains that are, be there. They're looking for a path from here to there and, and you're right, you know, if, if you start with a clean sheet of paper, fantastic, but, but most companies don't have that luxury. So Jeff, let me so. follow up on that. So what are some of the apps that you're seeing in the enterprise? I'm sure the CIO is kind of freaking out. He's, he, he's trying to make this move. He's got a whole stack of stuff. Um, where, do they, you know, where do they start? Where's kind of their, you know, how do they get their feet wet in where, this brave where new folks world? Are, where folks that we're talking to are kicking the tires is what we think of as a utility cloud. Okay. And so they're looking for ways to very cost effectively uh, create a, a dev test environment um, under OpenStack control and build out a cloud and that's a great way for them to get their feet wet. Okay. And, and from the numbers they're looking at, at they can do this very effectively using an OpenStack approach. So they can't almost take take that blank sheet of paper approach, build this little environment for kind of specialty, specialty kind of instances where well, people are doing little uh, yeah, development for the, projects for, yeah, or kind of standalone projects. Of, yeah, tons of development activity going on, and, and they can do that for their own use. So that's okay. that's the kind of folks that have approached this earliest. Okay. First. And then where do you, where do you think some of the real breakthrough, heavy lifting, mission critical? Okay, we're really ready to jump in with both feet and, 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 and adopt this methodology, if you will. What are some the, of the, what are the first couple tipping point apps you think might fall? The, it's, okay, so the, the well, it's funny, I think of, I almost think of this as an app, right? To, to, from our point of view, okay. is a utility cloud is an app. You're, in, you're enabling developers to do what they want, when they want, and giving them access to things like intelligent data protection so that they, they, can, they can actually write to what they need, okay. need to accomplish from a business perspective. Okay, interesting. So it's thinking of it that way. Uh, Jeff, talk yeah, about, that's great. Yeah. so I want to ask you about the Flash, and obviously we were at, um, IBM had an event yeah. last week, um, and obviously Flash memory is obviously going crazy right now. Um, and it's creating a lot of opportunities in software. So the open source world is really gaining ground using storage as an enabler versus just storing stuff. So uh, software is a key part of that. What's, how does that play into this? Because uh, storage is not going away, that's pretty clear, it's growing. So, right. so the new paradigm is scale out open source. And that's what people are trying to get to. And they might not get to an extreme level like a Facebook, but large enterprises want to reduce their footprint costs and increase their performance, and they're doing it by throwing a lot more gear out there and storing stuff. So how does that play into the trend with OpenStack? Well, so I'd say this is, this is fun. This is early days, right? And we're all figuring this out as we go. So the, the, the notion you're, you're really hitting on is, is how do you make make varying performance levels available, so it's the, kind of that, quali that quality of service frontier, and, and building SLAs in and making, <clears throat> making flash available at one end of it and, and capacity. Right now, OpenStack's a lot more focused on, uh, on bringing out the capacity tier. The, co the core building of the cloud. Yeah. So I want to talk about um, a term you guys kick around called non-disruptive operations, which yeah. you know it's, it's more of a categorical way to describe what everyone wants. I mean, no one wakes up in the morning and says, hey, how's your non-disruptive operations doing today? Um, so let's, let's unpack what non-disruptive operations means. There's a lot of stuff that, that's under the, right. under the hood of that. I mean, that means people don't want to disrupt their operations when either automating, configuring, managing the fluidness of data. Right. right, so take me through, what is non disruptive and is it a goal, is it a destination, is it a state of mind, is it technology, all of the above? Yeah, all of the above, I'd say. I mean, that's, I break it down, I always, you know, I'm, I keep it very, very simple for me, is what did the customer ask me for? And, and 
this comes, when we started building out non-disruptive operations some years ago for, for clouds, it was the notion of, I need to do things like tech refreshes and software upgrades, and for data that has varying SLAs and various levels of protection ha have, have been incorporated into that. And I can't take, I, I've got hundreds of, of clients, you know, diff, you know, in a, uh, a multi-tenant environment, right? I've got hundreds of clients sit, sitting there running on top of this. How do I work, how do I manage through that process underneath? And, and maintain integrity with, with the applications. So there's a, a, bunch of, a bunch of magic that happens underneath that. It's not easy and it's not easy to do at scale and, and so that's the areas that, uh, that we work at ar around, around non-disruptive operations. And talk about data protection, because obviously that data integrity, uh, is, it's not a clean black or white situation. What, what is the current state of the art when it comes to data protection um, in these cloud environments? Because there's some security issues, there's a lot of compliance, right. there's a lot of you know, management factors, but also there's some technical factors. What are, the, what are the, the key technical factors and management factors that you're seeing right now? So, it, for us it's the, um, trying to think of how to, I, I come at this from a different viewpoint. Um, so the things that we need to do is provide, uh, it, it always goes back to how do you provide recovery in seconds for customers? They, they can't have downtime uh, on their applications. So, so it's, it's rapid recovery of data, it's uh, keeping, keeping the network open, Th those are some of the, you know, some of the issues that, that we see where we bring value to the, the current state of the art in OpenStack um, around around just basic backup recovery, but then you have disaster recovery and how do you, how do you move yeah. off site? Uh, how, do you, how do you keep, um, you know, the, the problems don't change, just the way you go about solving them changes, so. Talk about the proposals you guys put forth this morning. So in your news release you mentioned yeah. you put a proposal, you said you brought code to the table. Can you explain what that is? Yeah, sure. The, basically, we've proposed, uh, um, there's about three pieces to it, if, if you break it down. There is, broadly, uh, the notion of, of an API that will, um, that abstracts the file system and it will work with any, any, um, any file type, um, but allows you to, to interface with any file type. And then there's uh, two specific implications that we, we put in place. So the first we put in place was for a generic Linux uh, capability, so we can talk to Linux and the, the file uh, the file component of Linux, and the other is a, a more specific implementation around NetApp's capabilities. Um, and that, uh, it, once you're there, then you get the advantages that, that NetApp has around managing files, moving files, protecting files, um, replicating files. So Jeff, I have a question yeah. on, the, on the business side. So when the CIOs are making this move to the cloud and they're, right. and they're putting in all this infrastructure and the investment, do you, do you see it more as a, is it a carrot or is it a stick? Is it, is it you know, they're getting beat up on the other side and they know they have to get in, into this space or is, is there some economic models that you use or that they're pulling from that are just so compelling that, that they must go there soon? It's, it's both. Okay. I mean, you know, it it kind of depends on, depends on the CIO. Um, mm. It depends on the application. What it's um, it's very compelling from a cost perspective, and, and people see that possibility, and then they look at well, do I have people that that can execute against it? So they they're they're being, as you would guess, cautious generally, and looking for people they can trust to get to uh, get to a solution that they can get started with and build out from. Okay, and still, are most of those experts coming from the product side? For coming from the the companies like yours, NetApp, that have experience with their infrastructure and how they're running, and we're there. We have a, yeah, you know, certainly we're there. We have a lot of customers coming to us, right. and and we're working with them. Um, there's an awful lot of great innovation going on here. I mean, that's what's so fun about this conference right. is um, there's small companies bringing innovations, big companies bringing innovations. Yeah. It's wh whoever's got a good idea gets a voice. It gets in, and that's yeah. that's really the benefit of the whole open source movement. Is there's a lot of collaborators. The innovation power, I would think, just far outstripped anything well, that an individual company can do. You know, if you bring code to the table, you can talk. If you can participate. And, and that's, that's cool. Yeah. Jeff, yeah. talk about, um, for the folks out there, the 
what your take is on OpenStack, because obviously you guys are a big participant in the community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, there are a lot of issues in the enterprise that, that quite frankly have to be addressed, you know? POSIX compliance, NFS support, all the stuff that needs, that no one, you know, that just has to be addressed and, and, and supported. And so you have this growth of an OpenStack community that's like, that's a lot, it's an open source project. Um, you have the cowboys, right? The cowboys, and you know, pun intended, kind of with the rack space, you know, dig there. But you know, it's a, it's a fast charging organization. NetApp is in these large enterprises; are very conservative, and they need to have certain things. Why is this year's OpenStack different? Can you talk about the vibe here and why um, we think it's at an inflection point, which we stated earlier? I want to get your take on it. Uh, is it at an inflection point, and why is it so important this year? Well, again, you, you start with the crowds. And, and you say, yeah, it's an inflection point. You don't get this many people here this interested without that. The other thing I think that I think is the, is the key is we're on the cusp, we're not there yet, but we're on the cusp of having a number of commercial distributions come out. And with those commercial di distributions, you move it out of the science project and, and into pragmatic adoption by mere mortals, right? Um, <laughs> You can't underestimate that. It goes back yeah. to the people question. Yeah, and I was really critical about OpenStack. When it, I mean, first of all, I was there before it started. We we're talking to Rackspace, so I just saw the whole migration. But the thing that I was really critical on OpenStack at the beginning was it was like, it was like a marketing, you know, you know, pool party. Everyone's jumping in from a marketing. But what happened was it really got really interesting fast uh, about a year and two years ago when software defined networking started hitting the yeah. scene. When you saw real guys coming in saying, "Hey, if we." collaborate and come together and build code. You mentioned bringing code to the table. Stuff got done quick. It moved quickly from a hype to implementation. It really has. And can you comment on that and kind of where you see it going? Uh, well, f uh, the first thing I see is that it feels like the whole open source approach has matured and, and it's gotten more efficient, more effective, perhaps. Um, we've been in OpenStack now, this is our fifth conference that we've we've participated in, we've been there. You know, From the beginning, yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, Rackspace has been a good partner for a long time. Um, many, you know, many of the other players here are also partners. Um, the, uh, so to your co cowboy <laughs> comment. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Rackspace cowboys. <laughs> the, uh, Texas. It's over in Portland now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is closer to Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> Not by accident. So I, I guess I, I go back to, you have the common distribution, our approach has been to be be putting code in upstream from that, so you have have that in in these commercial distributions that are rolling out. So we're there. Um, I mean, that's that's been our our approach has always been technical. We always we always try and um, under promise over deliver. I mean, that's kind of a, a yeah. NetApp's always been innovative and in, in, you know typical Silicon Valley company. What would you share with the folks out there? What's your take to the CIO message? What's your CIO message to the folks out there around? why OpenStack is important. Is it uh, the build factor? Is it the fact that it's faster time to market for cloud? Is it a uh, service plane? Is it, what, what is the key message to a CIO who's sitting there scratching their head going, you know, I'm trying to understand this OpenStack movement. You know, how should I put my arms around that? Okay, so, so as you think about building out the cloud, infrastructure service, you're building platforms on top of that, you may be building software as a service capability on top of that, potentially, is the first, first thing you got to get to is that infrastructure service level, and you need a management plane across that. And you need a management plane that's going to let everybody play because you want the innovation from the, the largest number of, of players. That's what OpenStack is delivering to the CIO, is you can start down that path with, uh, with, with now a, a pretty well-defined management plane, you know, continuous yeah, Certified by the crowd. Cer certified by the crowd, which is actually proven to be a pretty good model. Yep. And uh, now with commercial distributions coming out, um, you have access to that, but you st again, it's it's the don't don't overthink it, right? It, it's it's a management plane for infrastructure as a service. It's the Lego blocks for cloud. Yeah, right. So you guys yeah, obviously win. You guys win big. Obviously, storage is important. You're fitting into that Lego blocks. Is the big challenge from a white space standpoint going to be the automation configuration? Management? Where are the the major areas you see a lot of action going on in terms of the ar this architecture and this, the tool chest, so to speak? So, so we're we're very involved in. Uh, I guess we're not supposed to use code names anymore. Cinder, but the o OpenStack block storage capability. We, you know, we've been involved in that. That's a very big area that's going to continue to build. The, uh, but then you look at uh, at areas like uh, like glass for image management. You know, there's still a lot a lot of work going on there. There's a lot of work going on in um, uh, in quantum. You know, the 
the networking gave, I mean, all those pieces continue to evolve, and it's, well, it is all about automation, it's, it's all about uh, simplification. You know, that it's, it's how do you, how do you get, a, how do you get up and running with, with, a, with a infrastructure as a stack? That's what it's about. We're here with Jeff O'Neill with NetApp, obviously breaking it down five years with uh, the OpenStack, it was called the Design Summit back in the day, and again, this was really driven out of the, the rack spaces when they started getting in cloud, when they bought cloud sites, and they realized how hard it was to build cloud, they realized that, you know, it had to be a, a group of people come together and provide those best practices and tools and code. Um, so it's great momentum, it's a real inflection point. Uh, final parting question for you. Share with the folks, um, through the five year history since you've been involved with NetApp, how does this relate to scaling up in terms of this, the, this community. Um, there's a lot of folks that are looking at this community to join for OpenStack. They, mm -hmm. It's got a lot of real credibility and momentum now, never seen before, it's really got some lift. Right. What would you share with the folks that are either kind of tipping their toes in the waters, thinking about how to get involved, and that could be both developers and technology companies and, and enterprises. What would you share with them is, is, the, is the vibe right now, where's the road map? Okay, so. You got to realize I, I'm I'm the OpenStack guy within that app. This is a biased question. That's no, okay. Be biased. Sh share I'm, your opinion. I'm biased. Um, I, I'm seeing a turn. It, it is turning right now. We're at the cusp. We really are at that inflection point, as you've you mentioned. Um, it, it's it's time. If you're not already in POCs, and I mean, frankly, most many, many if not most of our customers are already in POCs. Um, it's time to time to get your toes wet and uh, and work on this. And this this is clearly there. It's you've got. Uh, I haven't heard the count yet, but you probably have it. There's uh, there's a big crowd out there. Yeah, over three thousand here in Portland. I mean, this is just taking on a life of its own. Uh, OpenStack is at an inflection point, it's crossing over into what a mainstream enterprise service provider telcos. Anyone who's investing in infrastructure and future solutions like mobile and software-led infrastructures, OpenStack is a key ingredient. Obviously this modern era of the data center, software-defined data center, whatever you want to call it, you guys are going to do well on that as storage is not going away. Um, and But having storage that's flexible and adaptable and agile in the environments is critical. That's and I think, I think this is where the future is headed. Again, this is the beginning. We're excited to be here exclusively. This is SiliconANGLE's coverage from theCUBE. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. <laughs>